What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 32 of Godzilla Tober, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. We're back into the MonsterVerse after a brief break for Shin Godzilla. This is a direct sequel to 2014's Godzilla, and it's directed by Michael D Doug Duggerty? Doherty? How do you pronounce the last name Doherty? In the UK, it's pronounced Doherty with a definite K sound, and in the US it's pronounced Dowerty. What? That doesn't sound right. Dowerty. 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 The director of Trick or Treat and the writer of X2, X-Men United. Great movie. People forget how good X2 is. So anyway, very capable hands. Let's go. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Jared Fearing. I'm a lifelong Godzilla fan and a big fan of Halloween. And nothing says Halloween like monster movies. So this year for the month of October, we're gonna review every single Godzilla movie from Gojira all the way to Godzilla and Kong the New Empire. So join me this month for a new video every single day and see if I go insane in the process. Let's get to it. The movie is a direct sequel to Godzilla 2014, and our main human characters, Kyle Chandler and Vera Farmiga, have lost their son in the San Francisco attack. It's caused a rift in their family, and they're separated. Kyle Chandler's off doing, you know, whatever. He's working with animals and doing stuff, he eventually gets entwined with Monarch. And Vera Farmiga, who is working directly with Monarch right now, is uh, trying to work on something called the Orca which is basically a device that is going to use frequencies to talk to the Titans. The movie opens with Vera Farmiga and Millie Bobby Brown living at a monarch outpost, and they go and witness the uh, birth of Mothra out of an egg, and she tests out the orca and is able to calm Mothra. And the Mothra hatching scene's pretty good. The Mothra worm version, is, you know, it's totally acceptable for a modern day take, especially being CGI, but there's always gonna be part of me that is a little bit sad that it's not the, the gross practical worms that we're used to seeing, just because I really love the Showa and the High Say version. But for the MonsterVerse, totally fine, love it. And immediately they are raided by a terrorist organization led by Charles Dance, who, if you don't know, was Tywin Lannister and is a great actor. Charles Dance plays a great villain here, and he doesn't have like a huge role, but what we do get from him is really good. He's really great. And uh, I wish there was a, a little bit more of him. He didn't really continue on after this. We don't really see him again. And actually, just recently, his character does come back in the new uh, video game, Kong Survival Instinct. So that's kind of cool. But I do wish we got more with Charles Dance because he is such a good actor. They really could have used him to add something to the human storyline. As soon as his terrorist organization invades Monarch and kids kidnaps everybody and kills a bunch of people, shoots a dude straight in the head, uh, it turns out that he's there to kidnap Vera Farmiga and Millie Bobby Brown, but really Vera is working with him. I, what I will say, instead of going along the plot, I'll just jump in here quickly and say, of the human stories in the series, this one's pretty okay. I'm not too upset with the human stuff going on here. It's not amazing. It definitely doesn't outshine the monsters, but it's not too bad. One of the biggest hangups of the human story is that Vera Formiga goes from being like, oh, I'm a grieving mother to fucking super villain in seconds, basically. <laughs> It's, it's seconds in movie time, um, you know, it's supposed to happen over a few years, but yeah, she basically becomes like a super villain. Anyways, this terrorist organization now has the Orca in hand, and they're up to nefarious stuff immediately, basically. On Kyle Chandler's side, we see that he's working with the government, and they're starting to have some kind of, uh, a bit of a battle between the military and Monarch to see who really should have control of the situation regarding Godzilla, now that the entire world knows that there's these types Titans, who has a uh, say in the oversight and the operations of how you deal with them. So Monarch and the military are kind of working together. Kyle Chandler's right in the middle, and he seems to have kind of the best instincts about Godzilla. And Godzilla is being agitated and drawn to Antarctica. 
and we fast forward a little bit and Charles Dance and Vera and Millie Bobby Brown are all in Antarctica and she uses the orca to reawaken King Ghidorah who's been frozen in the ice. King Ghidorah in this movie is done perfect. As much as a modern interpretation, a full CG reimagined King Ghidorah, I could not imagine it being handled any better here. It's so badass. The CGI is amazing for the most part. Uh, they have like a great story with him in terms of he's basically like an Avengers level threat, so to speak. He can destroy the entire world. All the other Titans are afraid of him and will basically like bow to his will because he's that powerful. And so Godzilla basically stands alone against Ghidra. Great idea. I love it. This movie is really kind of a riff on the first Ghidra movie, which is Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, where it was Godzilla and Rodan and Mothra working together to take down Ghidra because he was such a threat. And this movie is kind of similar, uh, except Rodan is more of a villain role and Mothra's a friend to Godzilla. And so it's more like a 2v2 type thing. But I love what they did with it. And the Antarctic uh, release scene is really awesome, but there's also something that's a little bit disappointing. And the disappointing thing is that they make it a really snowy scene and they've obviously digitally added the snow. And unfortunately it makes things a little bit hard to see at times. Uh, you can tell that the CGI uh, of Ghidra is incredible. It looks really good, but the scene does come out a little bit blurry and I even have it in 4K and it's still kind of blurry. So I wish that that was not a thing. I wish it was a little bit clearer, a little bit easier to see. But that's like a very minor point. Later on in the movie, there's a lot more clear scenes and everything looks great. If you watch my Godzilla 2014 video, one of the things I mentioned was that they've really stacked these movies with like an A-list cast. And one thing that this movie does that's a huge improvement over 2014 is that the cast members in this movie all get time to actually be on screen and develop and have great moments. Uh, with one exception, and that's poor Sally Hawkins, who's a great actress uh, from the Oscar award-winning Shape of Water. She's basically Dr. Sarah Zawa, or Ken Watanabe's assistant, and she doesn't get a chance to do very much. She spits out some facts, and then during the Antarctic release scene, she gets eaten by Ghidra. That's a bit of a bummer for me because she's such a great actress. They really could have done something good with her, but I think they just kind of wrote themselves into a corner and were like, well, where are we going with this character? There's not really going to be much. She's expensive to have as an actress or, you know, whatever the reason being, but she gets taken out pretty early and eaten by Ghidra. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a bummer on the acting side. Everyone else holds their weight fine on the acting side. I like that a lot. Um, Character-wise, Millie Bobby Brown is pretty annoying to me in this movie, but she's whatever. It's it's okay, but I don't love her storyline. Anyway, back to the monsters. Rodan is freed from a volcano in Mexico, and goddamn, the Rodan escape and chase scene is one of my favorite moments, if not my favorite moments, in all the movies. It is so good. I love the introduction of Rodan in this movie. The soundtrack the, is incredible. The score is incredible. Uh, Rodan coming out and like the gust of winds that he's causing, causing everything to blow away in Mexico. And then he chases after the military's flying ship, the Argo. Rodan faces off against King Ghidra and is promptly defeated. At which point Godzilla comes in and him and Ghidra fight again. Godzilla rips off one of Ghidra's heads. It's awesome. And then the military does, uh, they, they launch a weapon on Ghidra and Godzilla. Now, this is one of the points of the movie that I'm not as crazy about. They call it the Oxygen Destroyer. In my opinion, that's something with such uh, weight in the series that I wish they hadn't introduced it so soon, especially because it doesn't really do anything. King, King Ghidra just flies away and is fine. Godzilla, however, though, is mortally wounded and he retreats back to one of his undersea lairs and they need to basically get a bunch of radiation down to Godzilla to revive him. And so that's what they do, but it needs to be manually detonated, essentially. And so Serozawa, like, sacrifices himself in order to heal Godzilla 
so that Godzilla can save the world from Ghidra, essentially. After Godzilla rips off one of Ghidra's heads, Ghidra uh, plants himself on like a hilltop or a mountaintop, spreads his wings, you see his head recover, and he grows it back out. It gives us a good glimpse of Ghidra's recovery powers, and it ends up being one of the most badass images in like all of cinema. It's so cool. I love it. Great image, take a look, this is amazing. Um, this movie has some amazing cinematography and amazing scenes like that where you just get like a picture perfect image of the monsters or like a human in perspective of the monsters uh, like earlier with Kyle Chandler and Godzilla outside the blast walls and stuff. Just tons of great imagery in this movie. I, I really love all that. Anyways, back to Sarazawa sacrificing himself. He, uh, I, I don't, Love also that they got rid of Ken Watanabe so soon because he's awesome. I, I wish we got more of him, but I guess I understand. I mean, like they, they make it emotional and there's a lot of weight to the decision. And so even though we've lost now two of the main like high profile actors, uh, the Sally Hawkins one, I feel a bit cheated by, but Ken Watanabe, even though they chose to kill him off, I think they, they did it with a bit of class and they handled it in like a really nice scene where he's right up close to Godzilla and, and puts his hand on him and stuff. And in the MonsterVerse, Sarazawa is pretty different than the original uh, Gojira Sarazawa. And in this one, there's like a long history of him working with Monarch and these other Titans, especially if you've read some of the comics or you've seen the Monarch series and you know you don't have to watch all these supplemental things to get the full effect but they've put a lot of effort into the character to make him a lot more involved with the kaiju than in the original series. Godzilla is re-energized and he faces off with King Ghidra in Boston and we get amazing Ghidra scenes, we get amazing Godzilla scenes, Rodan and Mothra fight, Mothra is now in her butterfly form and just like I said about the worm form, like Butterfly Mothra is, it's totally fine. I like it. I like the design. But for some reason, uh, I, I just prefer like the Showa Mothra to this new one design wise. Rodan, on the other hand, I love the legendary Rodan. I think they did a great job with the redesign. And Showa Rodan will always be my favorite. But I do really, really like this uh, legendary redesign of Rodan. I think they nailed it. I, I think it's great. And I would like to see more of Rodan. Um, it's not gonna happen, but I would love like a Rodan solo movie somehow. I think that would be a lot of fun. But anyway, Rodan and Mothra battle and Godzilla and Ghidra battle and Mothra eventually dies and Rodan is wounded and retreats. And then Godzilla and Ghidra are fighting to the death. And one of the coolest things about this is that they found a way to have Godzilla do kind of like his burning form without uh, having it be the meltdown we saw in Godzilla vs. Destroya. And Mothra's life energy gets absorbed by Godzilla and he's able to basically let off a nuclear blast. And during the blast, we see uh, like Mothra's image appear in the blast as Godzilla does it. And that's so, so cool. Such cool imagery. I really, really love that. And the nuclear pulse is enough to take out Ghidra and Godzilla rips off one of the heads and, and blows it up with his atomic breath and they've killed off Ghidra and Godzilla's left as finally the king. And what what a great final battle. Uh, during the final battle, Vera Farmiga ends up dying as well. And so we're left with Kyle Chandler and Millie Bobby Brown and we see them both in the next movie as well. But uh, yeah, they've killed off a lot of their A-listers here. Charles Dance in the post credit scene finds one of the severed Ghidra heads and it's in, it's insinuated that he's buying it for his organization or whatever he's going to do with it. We'll talk about that in future episodes. But they handle everything great in this movie. All the monsters are given their appropriate amount of time. Uh, they all shine. I love the battle scenes. The color palettes are great. There's so much intuitive like color design in this movie. I love all the redesigns, uh, and and I know it, it. I was kind of picking on the Mothra one, saying I like the other designs better, but I still do really like the legendary design. I think it works well, and I love this movie. I think it's incredible. I highly recommend it. It it's hard for me to kind of pin down which MonsterVerse movie I like best, 
but this one is definitely near the top, if not the top. I really, really love King of the Monsters. I think they nailed pretty much all aspects of it. And uh, like I said, kind of near the beginning, the human story is never really the selling point for these movies, but this is a respectable attempt at actually having interesting human characters. And I think they're probably the most successful that any of the movies have been on the human side, with maybe the exception of like Shin Gojira, the human story is very well written in that and the dialogue and sequences are really well done in Shin, but you can just go back and watch my episode about Shin Gojira if you wanna hear more about that. This movie is awesome in my opinion. And this is one of these movies where it's so confusing if you look at the critical score. This movie is certified rotten on Rotten Tomatoes. It has 43%, and if you look at the fan score, it's got 83%, and I think even that should be higher <laughs> if it was me, but it just shows you that the fans do love this movie. And I honestly don't even know what the critics' problem is with it. These movies are, you know, they're, they're designed to be a pathway to the monster scenes. And these critics tend to be like caught up on, you know, the humans, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know what kind of movie this is and you should be kind of uh, judging it on its merit. Uh, you know, if, if this is your first Godzilla film and you have no idea what you're getting into, okay, maybe you can be a little bit disappointed of that. But Godzilla is one of those franchises where you kind of know what you're looking for and what you're getting. And so the the whole critical bombing of this movie is really sad and it didn't it didn't do quite as well at the box office I think because of that. This movie cost about 170 million dollars to make and worldwide it made about 380 million dollars. So it was a financial success but in movie terms, that's not like a blockbuster. Just doubling your cost is not that great in terms of movie revenue and, and stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think we're lucky that they continued on with the franchise because this movie just didn't, it didn't do that well in the theaters, um, you know, relatively. So I'm thankful that they continued because I love this movie and I know that some people don't like it, but those people suck. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get angry comments in the comments below. That's okay. You're okay to be upset, but I really like this movie and I'm willing to be defensive over it. I think it's really good. Whether you like it or not, it did continue on and we'll talk about that in our next movie in the series and that's Godzilla vs. Kong. I remember when they announced this movie, I was pretty shocked that they were going to the crossover so soon. Um, we had Kong Skull Island and that was kind of it on the King Kong front. So I was a little bit shocked that they were already jumping to the crossover. How did it turn out? I guess we'll talk about that next time on uh, Godzilla Tober. So we're coming into the final stretch. So please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. The next couple days here, there's going to be multiple video uploads per day. So be sure to be checking back because we're in the last few days of Godzilla Tober and we're gonna get all these episodes in. So I'm working hard for you guys. I wanna do a good job of this. So let's finish strong. We only have a few days left, a few more episodes. Let's go. I will see you all next time on Godzilla Tober.